Back of the house. I'm done. Dottie's yelling at me about the Evo. We're trying to figure this out. I think we're going to try and just throw a sissy bar on so she doesn't fall off the back and then take it for a ride and see if we're actually going to keep this thing. Lots of cleanup stuff to do. I like this one. Agree with me, the internet. She wanted a daily bike that starts easy. Like this one. Or that one. Or that one. I will never go on the bagger. <laughs> Time lapse this thing. Blast it apart. got the fender off. Uh, these strut rails are roached completely. Thin little tin covers, not actual rails. So we're going to have to get some of those for this along with um, the fender should be okay. We'll reuse this. We might coat this black just so it matches the rest of it. But that's about as far as we're going for now. I might pull the bars off tonight too. Um, just set it up a little bit more cruiser-ish. I'm not at all familiar with Evos, but I'm assuming that they usually have a strut rod brace type thing for the rear on here. That's what we need to look at. So, I might pull out the catalog and take a gander before we make any decisions here. I do have this sissy bar. I don't remember what this came off of, but ideally, I can get something I don't know if that's even going to work. Oh, it's too narrow. I don't know what this was off of. Let's take a look. See here? It's probably iron head. Yeah, that's not going to work either. Anybody got an Evo sissy bar? Let me know. I'm looking for just a quick drop-in bolt-on setup for the rear strut or the rear strut rails too. I got some internet research to do, which is not going to happen today because it is way too nice out here. I am at a standstill because I don't understand how Evos work. I've never had one of these or taken them apart. You got the rear fender off. I don't know how this works. I was hoping it was going to kind of be a strut design like these on the shovel head um, where the strut rails mount to the front of the frame. This is a pinched off, dimpled tube section, so I'm assuming, my logic, that there's some sort of round bar section that goes across here, almost like the uh, pan head or early shovel, the round tube exhaust mounts, something along those lines where it gets bolted in here and that comes back and then you got your little chrome covers that go over it. I'm in deep water of never working on anything this new. So I don't know how that works. Uh, if you guys know, please let me know in the comments. Because now this is taken apart. And we can slap it back together and go for a ride. Or we can just kind of leave it. I want to make this black anyway. But all the circuit breakers and stuff are free. I need to figure out, it's a 92, I think. I don't even know what year this stupid bike is. Uh, 06 92. So it's a 92 Sporty. What do they do for the rear? How do I get a bolt-on sissy bar without spending Harley dealership prices or Facebook internet prices? If it's a super specific one for the year and you guys know, please, again, let me know. I'm asking for help at this juncture because I don't know what I'm doing on these. Other than that, we'll leave this video there for now, I guess. Evo day. Uh, I just got home. It's 7, 8, something late. 
later night than usual at the shop. I usually try and get out of there around five or six, but really depends on the day. Spend some time doing some rush job stuff, which is good because that builds up the bank account. Here's the Evo back together from the last time we looked at it. I found all the broken things. These are strut covers, not actual struts. So I'm surprised that this lasted as long as it did, but it makes perfect sense as to why the turn signals rattled out of here. So seats coming off, fenders coming off, and then I gotta drop this off at the shop because for the first time in a very long while, not dead, but I have, or not that busy. So I can sneak that fender in quickly tomorrow. Which means I gotta stay out here tonight and jam on this, get that off so we can get started on blasting it. I think we're just gonna do a gloss black. Gloss black front fender, gloss black on the tank, just single stage gloss black. I'm not looking for show finish or anything fancy in that regard, just something to make it not blue since nothing else is. And then if I have the motivation, I kind of feel like we were at in the last video where I kept saying, oh, I'll pull the bars off, I'll pull the bars off. I didn't get around to pulling bars off because we put it all back together and just wrote it down the road <laughs> as is. Don't tell Dottie that because she saw how broken the strut mounts were. Um, yeah, she doesn't have to know that one. So I will throw you guys up on the tripod. We're just going to blast this apart. I'm not walking you through anything. It's all cobbled together just to get it back on the road so we could ride it 15 minutes down the road and back. But she for sure enjoyed riding on the back of this. She wants a backrest and a sissy bar. Brackets and actual struts are on order. I should have those tomorrow. So we'll get this prepped, get the fender ready to blast for tomorrow, and then other than that, it's all bolt-on stuff, which is boring, but just throw this together, keep the seat, hopefully. Black fender, actual strut rails, sissy bar that should bolt up to the new strut rails we got coming. And we got some six inch risers. I don't know what I'm doing for bars on this yet. I hate these things, but I really hate the lowness of these. And then we're gonna set this back to stock ride height because somebody dropped this a little bit, pulled the tubes up. So we'll pull that back up to where it should be right at the end. We got six inch risers. I don't know if I'm gonna do a little drag bar thing or some, you know, kind of T-bar-ish style setups. Not really sure yet. That's going to be another project, but tonight, let's blast apart. At least get everything off. And then I can drop this off at the shop before day job things tomorrow.
been pretty brutal about ripping this thing down and just going through it as quickly as possible. So, a couple little hang-ups. I'm not sure if it's going to show up in the time-lapse, but <clears throat> there's a bracket. This guy with a broken stud in it. I think I knew that that was broken, but we'll get that all patched up and fixed before we put it back in. But this is the fender brace bracket that goes back here-ish. So that'll drop into each side of the fender. Here's your support bar. And then there's a bolt that goes through there. And I'm just making one big giant pile on this dresser that's still sitting here. Uh, the only other thing, tail light assembly can come all off together as one. You will not get the plug to clear the fender unless you pull this bracket. So make sure you take this one out, especially in my case. And I got a drill tap, try and fix that and maybe just buy a new bushing. I don't know. Future me problem. But everything else is on here. I'm also telling you this if you're going to a paint guy or a powder coater, more so the coating side. If it's paint, maybe they can, they don't have to worry about the heat that I do. But I get these all the time that are pretty much set up just like this. I want the rear fender done and I'll get them just like this. So plastic inner fender, I cannot powder coat this. This will melt. Bushings, rubber grommets, all of which will melt. And I'll take them apart for you, but I charge hundred bucks an hour. So that's how that goes. Here's where we are at now. So I figured I'd bring you guys back real quick while we're just doing the rest of these stupid little clips. Um, the wiring loom runs through this and then we have, it's hard to see because the colors are all the same, but you have these little pins right here and everything else is riveted. So um, the circuit breakers are riveted. I don't know if I'm gonna drill, drill these out or not. I, I probably will, and then we'll just re-rivet these back in, and then we'll re-rivet the inner fender back in, which you guys can see the remnants. I just took an oversized drill bit. I don't care about this component yet. Um, I just wanted to get the heads off to get everything disassembled. But on these little clips, they rotate full 360 in here. Grab a little screwdriver, put it in, and you have a fat side and a skinny side here. So fat side on this side, skinny side here. Jam your screwdriver in, turn the skinny side, and pull. Gets it up, and then they come off just like that. So that's your little clip doodads on here. These are not that expensive and probably worth replacing because this is a 92 after all. <clears throat> it's the newest bike I own currently, but 92 I don't think is new for the rest of the world. So for me, this is brand. This is a brand new bike. Uh, for the rest of you, probably not so much. And I'm sure there's probably a plethora of you guys doing the Evo Sporty thing like everybody else in the world right now. So that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I am gonna drill the heads off of these. I'm gonna leave all the rivets and the fenders. I'll finish this part after blasting, but before coating. I just, I gotta get inside, eat some dinner, shop things went way later than it was supposed to but rush jobs pay way better than they uh than normal stuff so don't mind staying late but i'm running short on time and i am way backlogged on editing videos so i will drill the heads off of these little circuit breaker clamps leave the rough ugly part of the rivets in and then he can at least start blasting this tomorrow and when i get up to the shop tomorrow night. This will be ready to go. Just gloss black. I don't think we're gonna film anything on that. Nothing fancy at all. Just trying to single stage gloss black and honestly it would probably look better if it doesn't look perfectly brand new gloss black because nothing else on the bike does. And I don't wanna dig into the rest of that. I am gonna pull off that trim on the front fender too. This little windshield trim that they got going on there, that'll go away. But we're keeping the fenders on both because this is supposed to be the new daily bike that's going to replace the Super Glide. Not that I ever think I'm going to jump on this instead of the Super Glide, but Daddy wants a fresher bike. Maybe something we can jam farther miles on. If this is more comfortable, I'm past the point of needing to feel like I look cool. So all I'm doing is popping the heads off of these. Only the heads. I'll just throw all the circuit breaker clips up here. 
a little washer underneath that I lost on two of these that I saw drop, so I'll grab those. But, there's my little circuit breaker, so you can see the two washers that I lost on the bottom. Circuit breaker, clamp, washer, then rivet. Well, rivet goes through the clamp and then the other part. So, here's the little washers. We'll make sure we just make a pile. I'm throwing everything on the table and figuring out where it all goes when we go to do the reinstall. I don't know if I'm going to do a full walkthrough. The Evo stuff is not that exciting to me. I feel like... There's so many of these and so many people that have had these. I guarantee you, you can find most of it. If there's something specifically on a 92 that you guys are interested in, let me know. If not, I'm just ripping things apart and putting it back together as quickly as possible. That's the goal on this one. I don't, I don't enjoy working on these. I really don't want to be doing any work at all. But if it's not getting sold or not getting hacked up and put into a chopper, we'll at least set it up where it's rideable for the summer since that hopefully is coming right around the corner. So fender is done, completely stripped, minus the rivets. We'll have to figure that part out, but he can start blasting on this tomorrow while I'm at the day job, and then I have something to coat tomorrow evening, and then we can come back, and then I'm hoping the V-twin order shows up with the strut rails and the sissy bar brackets. So I got this sissy bar down here. I have another one with a little back pad in the car, but it's real short. That's probably the sissy bar we're going to end up putting on there and with the bolt-on bracket kit. So in theory, everything should hopefully just line right back up as long as I can drill and tap that one bolt that's broken off in there. So that's where we're at. Let's see if I got time to pull the bars or not. If not, that'll be tomorrow's video. Hopefully this view works for you because we are just going to blast this front bar assembly off a little bit here. So... Rear is very naked, front is on. I'm listening to music and having a good time while I relax and just rip this all apart and everything will dangle. Six inch risers, I'm hoping the wiring clears. We will find that out tomorrow. So there's a million zip ties and a bunch of little bolts, but we can strip everything off the bars real quick. So you got quarter inches on the risers. The rear riser is also your gauge mount bolt. So we'll blast this apart real quick, like so, and then we're running into headlight interference on the rest of it, but everything I'm taking off is going on to this little workbench area, which is fine. We'll deal with the rest later because a lot of this is getting stripped off. This has heated grips and a bunch of extra bull crap that we're not going to use, so gauge is free. We'll wiggle that around enough to pull these lower bolts. Uh, we got a quarter inch on the outer gauge. What size are you? And I'm going to hold off on that. I'm actually going to pull the handlebar controls off first. So, 530 seconds on these. Didn't I just say I'm not doing an actual video on these? If you are going to use an impact, make sure they get in all the way. A couple of these are already kind of stripped out, which isn't good. Also going to be a future me problem, but we'll yank the hardware here. There's our master cylinder clip. Gently set the bolt because we don't want to lose that. I'll thread these right back into what they came off of, just so I don't lose them. I'm not walking you through all of these, but I will walk you through a couple on my process of just blasting things apart and slapping them back together. It's a little bit easier in this regard because I give zero cares or concerns. That's a polite way of saying it. About this turd pile of an Evo, it just it runs really good. I will admit that. It does run good. So got that one dangle in there. Grab the other one here. Just at least get these kind of started back in so I can easily slap this all right back together. Just like that. I don't care about the tank because that's already dented and dinged up. This lower one, we're going to have to probably pound a Torx or something in there. <clears throat> and then 
Is that it for the bar stuff? We gotta grab the... What are you on the bottom? Phillips. Or flathead. Phillips is what it should be. We'll just loosen these up. I don't have wires run internally on any of these handlebars, which makes it a little bit nicer. So all we gotta do is drop these off. A lot of the times you can get by just loosening and sliding this off, but in my case, all of the wires are run externally already, which gives me some confidence that we're gonna have enough room to do a different bar setup and not have an issue in terms of bar clearance. The internal bars, it's not that hard to rewire them, it's just a pain in the behind. It's not hard, but it's not fun. So we'll do that, and then we're also gonna be switching back to a single throttle. Uh, I know you're supposed to have two on the newer stuff, but I don't care. I have one throttle cable on every one of the bikes that I own, and it will continue to stay that way as long as possible. So I'm gonna pop these free, and then I'm gonna pull these little brass connectors. So <clears throat> you got a little ball on the end of the throttle. Don't lose these. They're accessible, they're readily available if you do, but if you can avoid it, it's way nicer when you have everything kind of laid out as it should be. So we'll free this up, put a little tension on there. More concerned about the little connector ferrule fitting than the actual disassembly right now. So. Make sure I can put these over here, and then the rest of it will kind of just be what it is. Uh, what am I losing here? Oh, what do you know? The heated grips and the zip tie packaging is in the way. So this will all sit and dangle. It's still staying as a closed loop system on the brakes, so I don't have to overtly worry about that too much. So there's that one. And then we'll do the same thing on this housing. Uh, Two bolts on the housings. One. Man, I was supposed to be time-lapsing this and not explaining things. Oh, is it just one on this side at least? No, there's another one back underneath the heated grip wiring. All right, so we'll spin this off. Come on, what are you, half a thread left? Spin this off real quick. Pop the bolt back out. There we go on that one. And that should do it. Let's grab a Torx, pound something in here to free this one up. This, was, this is the one that's kind of stripped out. Don't know what size we're gonna need. I don't mind or need it to actually work. I just need it to come apart right now. <clears throat> so, what size are you? T25, just close enough. <clears throat> All right, so we got one that's kind of rounded out, which is gonna turn into a pain in the butt. I don't know if this is going to make the cut for the video because I don't have time to mess around and walk you through how to do that, but we have one bolt that we need to remove. <clears throat> they are standard, but sometimes you can get lucky with either a Torx or metric sizes. So right now I'm going to try it this way with a four millimeter instead of the 5.30 seconds that I believe it's supposed to be. Or if it's metric and I strip that out, that's fine too. We don't usually work on metric parts or hardware in this garage. So. <clears throat> nope. She's gonna fight me. Fun. 
All right, I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do and then I'll explain what I did, hopefully, if I remember. If not, we'll be back when this is all apart. Battery's about to die anyway. Totally stripped, no welder here, so we're just jamming away. Drill the head off. Is this the optimal way? Absolutely not. But it will work. If you have battery power. If you don't, then you end up having to do a quick little flip flop here like that. I don't know what size this is, seven millimeter? The bolt itself is way smaller than it needs to be, but let's see if I can jam this down enough to stay put. Come on. Fight me a little bit. All right. So we got down far enough to make that okay. Now I just gotta round that head off, almost like a rivet. You guys are probably gonna die before this gets finished, but now we're going oversize here on the head. She's working. Doesn't feel good on a leg laying into it like this, but. Okay, 5 16 with an actual real drill bit, not a cheapo hardware store one. Took that right off. So our button head is off, this will be free. And that should leave me with enough meat on the bottom. If I can get this washer up. to get this off. It's just the clutch part. I actually do know for a fact I got a ton of these at the shop too, so I'm not overly concerned at all. So there's that. Now we're free. So there's the clamp. That's the important part. And if we look at the other side of the clutch cable with the turn signal wires, we got a stud. This will come out right out, guaranteed. If not a little bit of heat with the torch, and we'll be in good shape. So we yank the bars back up, break the rest of these zip ties, like so. And then I'm not trying to salvage or save any of the wiring from the heated grips. So all of this will come off. I don't know what this needs to come off. Phillips on the bottom for the heated grips that we're not going to be running. And two more bolts on the clamps and the bars are off. So I'll undo this if the battery dies before that. Sorry, we'll catch you guys tomorrow. If not, we'll have the bars off of this thing. Pretty quickly, like so. And there's my quarter inch. Racing the clock now. No, oh, we dropped both of those spacers for the riser speedo drive too. I don't know if that's factory or not. I don't really care, but there we go. Lay these out over here. And last but not least, final little glimpse here. 
because I'm not going to recharge the batteries. But we got one zip tie holding the heated grip on that we're cutting right off of the bars. So we have a stripped down sporty. Risers we will do tomorrow. So thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that other fun stuff. If you are so inclined, I greatly appreciate it. It costs you nothing and gives me more money to waste on stupid Harley stuff. So tomorrow we'll get back out here and start messing around with the risers. I do 100% need to get this moped jamming too. Um, I think I'm going to start messing with the cases before the weekend because I got one of my old moped buddies from years ago that I haven't seen in a while that wants to come by the shop and give it a frame for house decorations upstairs. He's going to give me a hand re-centering up this front axle. That I can do it, I just don't really want to, and I got a bunch of other stuff going on, like ripping down a perfectly running bike. We'll catch you guys on the next one.